What started as an isolated strike at Wits University over a 10% fee increase has raged across the country, with the University of Cape Town being the second institution to raise the baton and take to the streets. The streets of Rondebosch have come to a near standstill as students rally together in a nationwide protest that is gripping South Africa. We spoke to one of the demonstrators to find out why they have gathered here in front of Rondebosch police station. I think there's, there's more than one issue at hand here. Yeah. The biggest issue I think why students are fighting is because of the fees. Our fees are being raised at incredible rates and it's just not practical and as how the government management of universities are expecting us to keep up with the rates at which fees are increasing. UCT responded swiftly by getting a court interdict to prevent students from disrupting operations. CNBC Africa spoke to the acting vice chancellor, Professor Francis Peterson, on how the university will deal with the crisis. The, the protesters had uh, two items, mainly two items for the agenda that they wanted to bring under the attention of management. Uh, the one is that of, uh, um, of fee increases, and the other one is that of the insourcing, outsourcing model of the university. Now, those, both those two uh, uh, items of the agenda is not only a UCT uh, uh, um, aspect, but it's also related to, um, to other campuses uh, across South Africa. So what has happened at the UCT campus is that yesterday these protesters started by um, uh, uh, blocking off the entrances uh, of uh, the main campus and in fact also other parts of the campus and then they also started to disrupt uh, some of the lectures uh, there were examinations that needed to take place uh, yesterday that that could not happen the following day finance minister Ntlantla Nene was to deliver his medium term budget statement after the students rejected the 6% cap on fee increases proposed by government. We do have word that the procedure is set to get underway and the finance minister will be making his way to the podium. And we are rising because the process which the minister is starting today is going to lead to the adoption of two acts, the adjustment appropriation bill and, and the Division of Revenue Bill, which is the legal instrument for Parliament to allocate money for expenditure on any item. So we think that this MTBPS must be postponed today. We go and review all the budgets that are there, consider some of the rollover monies from the departments and allocate to higher education so that we can fund free quality education for all students. That is the concrete proposal that we're raising, Chair. This is a movement which, if we do not do anything urgent, might escalate into violence, might lead to loss of life. And, and what, we, we, are, we are pleading Order, with you that Honourable members. allow Parliament to rediscuss each and every budget that has been presented. Order. So that we come back to Parliament, inform the Minister of Finance properly in terms of what should happen. The fundamental issue here is that I agree there is a protest taking place outside and South Africans are demanding answers. I believe the best form of an indicator for an answer is that let the ANC minister who is here to table a budget respond to the people of South Africa about what allocations he's made in the budget. So I'm asking that he comes up and answer to the people of this country as to what's happening with the Department of Education. We must allow the process to proceed so that subsequent to that, South Africans can hear, we can hear as to where this budget sits and then subsequent to that make our submissions to say either he's hurt the students or has failed to do that. If he's failed to do that, then the students and South Africans have a right to make a response to that. But they can't if they can't hear what is to be tabled today. So can I proceed that we proceed on this basis? Chair, I'm rising on a point of order. No, order. Chairperson, order. Chair. Order. Chair. Oh. There's a point of order, order on the chair. table. Chair. The minister must sit down and then we'll raise I the point of order. order. Honorable Chair, by tabling no, no. the minister's statement. Sit down. 
The they are just an down. estimates of national expenditure. There's a point of order. And there's there's a point of order. Bill oh. and the division of revenue, revenue amendment fall. bill. Fall. 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 I now Please call upon fall. the Parliamentary Please Protection fall. Services Please to assist the search and the arms to remove fall. the members from Please the chamber so that the House fall. can proceed Please with its business. Fall. Please must While the minister was delivering his speech, he was unaware that the students had broken through the gates of parliament in what was mostly a peaceful demonstration. It is indeed uh, my privilege to present the 2015 medium term budget policy statement together with the Adjustments Appropriation Bill and the Division of Revenue Amendment Bill for 2015 16. Honorable members, global economic growth has slowed, commodity prices remain depressed and unemployment has increased in many parts of the world. Growth is considerably lower in our economy than we projected in February. This is in part a consequence of the global slowdown, but it also reflects our energy constraints and structural weaknesses in our own economy. We have had to revise our revenue estimates down for the period ahead. The medium-term budget policy statement outlines the tough choices we have to make and challenges us to implement our national development plan with vigor. We want percent this year, rising marginally to 1.7 percent next year. 1.7 percent next year. This is considerably lower than at the time of the February budget when we envisaged a 2 percent uh, this year and 2.4 percent in 2016. The IMF has also uh, projected a decline in growth next year and perhaps that's where the 1.3 comes from. Investment growth will be just 1.2% this year. Limited employment growth and household income constraints are holding back consumption. Behind me is one of the gates where the students broke through today at Parliament during the medium-term budget speech. We've seen intense clashes between the police and students. We've seen stun grenades being let off, pepper spray, tasers. The students have been responding with throwing stones and bottles over the top, but mostly they did try and create a peaceful protest. They did break through the gates and enter illegally. Some things are coming over the top of my head, but it seems as though some people thought that this student uprising may be quelled, but on the contrary, it seems that it might be intensifying as it sweeps across the country.
somebody must tell me why I'm getting arrested right now. Why? Leave me alone. Why are you arresting me, man? Just get your hands off me, okay? After the police forced the students from the grounds of parliament, CNBC Africa was able to speak to opposition leaders on their thoughts on the budget and the higher education crisis. What we were expecting today was an ambitious medium-term budget policy statement that would give hope to the 8.4 million uh, people who are unemployed in South Africa and also the thousands of students which are gathered here at uh, Parliament today. But what we got uh, was a business-as-usual medium-term uh, budget statement which didn't go to the heart uh, of the real uh, dealing with the real issues holding back uh, economic growth uh, and uh, job creation in South Africa. But the minister has just said now, he intends to increase the country's debt by another 600 billion rand. Look, I show you here, I've got here my time, my debt clock. I was sitting in the house as he was speaking, and it says that this country is now indebted to the tune of almost two, two trillion rand. And then he announces that he wants to increase it by another 600. I mean, just tell me now. Just tell me, what does that mean? He's not saying anything about reducing the size of cabinet, which is so big, it makes no sense. I don't know how anybody manages 70 something cabinet ministers. What said earlier today? What I said today was, was had a sense of more of the same. It was a budget that failed to address the crucial needs of South Africans. And it's certainly for South Africans who are without work, this budget didn't give them much hope. And uh, what was more of a deeper crisis was that in fact, while South Africans are busy protesting outside, battling to find access to higher education, the minister failed to simply address that. It was a failure of leadership, it was a failure of policy, and it clearly was a clear indicator about the distant nature that the ANC is to what is happening to the people of South Africa. The minister himself, uh, in his budget speech earlier this year and in uh, his medium-term budget statement, said, for example, that he's very con concerned about what's happening in the tourism, se the tourism sector. Now, we all know that the tourism sector uh, is a sector where we can grow jobs in our uh, economy. And I was expecting the minister to, for example, make a statement and reverse economic policy in the tourist sector, reverse the visa regulations, holding back uh, growth and jobs in the tourism sector. Instead, it was a business as usual, medium term uh, budget statement, and it was deeply disappointing. He admits that he's in deep trouble in the sense that he predicted a 2% economic growth rate, and the end he admits it's only 1.5%. That means he's got a, short, a, short, a shortage of uh, revenue. I think he buffered it with the personal tax increase of 1% in the beginning of the year, so he survived this year and he balanced the books. His problem is next year and the year afterwards admitting the economic growth is down there as well and I don't think there's any buffer there to help him in that sense. On the other side, I hope for something specific to help uh, stimulate the economy and that was business as usual, you know, uh, nothing special. There's a lot of money out there for people willing to invest but wait and see at the moment whether they must. Something like 800 billion in South African banks but what happened outside as well. It's not sending that type of message that people say I'm willing to invest now and that's the bad part. This has been a long-going political matter. You can recall that I've historically even met with the University of Forte. I met with the University of Vets University to discuss the issue of student funding. It's been an ongoing battle. So it's not anyone trying to use anything. It's about the facts on the table, about the fact that underfunding is taking place. And as a responsible citizen of this country, I cannot steer away from the fact that we need it to urgently act on this matter. And so I think the EFF has permanently been opportunistic on this matter. And clearly, they, we didn't come up with a plan and we needed to hear the budget so that we can create the alternative funding mechanism to be able to articulate where money must be prioritized so that we can address these issues. Quality education for all students. That is the first issue that you must speak about on how there's not going to be any fee increase next year. So we're going to demand that immediately Parliament starts. Before anything happens, we want the Minister of Finance to tell us as to when and how is he going to give students the money which they've been demanding. The whole country is up in arms now to demand free education and we are together with students because we've been saying since we arrived here that we want free education for all.
So that is what we're going to be demanding when we move forward. So how are we going to increase our capacity relative to other countries if we don't have a workforce that is capable? That is a critical area. Of course, linked to it immediately would be the question of ongoing infrastructure development. And we have to move away from some of the some of the areas in which we are now. This thing of going nuclear, which wants huge amounts of money, which we don't have. Uh, it is um, uh, quite concerning because, um, firstly, it is the matter that government assists with. It has uh, been escalating because uh, this unrest in the universities and it is for that reason that the Minister of uh, Higher Education has brought this uh, to Cabinet's attention and um, it doesn't allow government uh, adequate time to consider the matter, but it, uh, government is assist with the matter, as I said. Yeah. Look, there should have been a collective effort. The president of the ANC is there, sitting in parliament, smiling as usual. He should have come out himself to say that I've listened to your cries, I've listened to your concerns, I've listened to your messages, I've listened to your demands, and I am ready as a president to provide free education. I was giving an example now that when there was a crisis in ESCOM, we convened a special sitting of parliament to appropriate 25 billion rands to intervene in ESCOM. Why can't we do the same with the interventions that must be given to higher education? Because students are not willing to go back to classes until this issue has been resolved adequately. So we need to deal with that issue here in parliament as public representatives to show that we indeed represent the people. We are not representing our jackets and ourselves at the expense of the people. fight struggle for free education but a principled one. SASCO is part of the youth progressive youth alliance and it must be truthful and say that its motherboard is the one that prevents black students from getting tertiary education at free for free. Our demands as students is as follows. We don't want any increase because there are no salaries increase. We don't have money. A lot of students getting excluded because of this financial problem. I just want to know the leaders who's demanding 10% increase or 6% increase. Was their kids ever been excluded financially? To prioritize education and training of young people. Because unless you produce that, you have no potential to expand the economy and therefore to absorb, for instance, unemployment, uh, to, to provide the necessary work for all of these young people that are passing through universities and things like that. Education in general forms a, an important part of um, government policy in general. We're spending um, a lot of money in education. Actually, education is one of the highest uh, um, expenditure line items including um, funding of um, uh, students at, national, at um, um, in institutions of higher learning, learning uh, through the National Student um, Aid uh, Scheme, where we have spent uh, uh, in excess of 50 billion rands since we started ramping it up, and as we speak now, we actually have trebled the annual allocation uh, to that space. But it just shows that the need out there is, uh, is huge. And it is for that reason that we think, and the process had already started, to look at how best we can actually find a long-term um, and lasting solution to the, uh, to the problem. We've seen the students having rejected the 6% wage increase, and we understand that you had a, a meeting with Minister of Higher Education, Bladen Zemande. Can you give us details about this meeting to address the crisis we see in the country at the moment? Look, Minister Zemande had a discussion with, uh, with the stakeholders in order to try a solution. 
the solution that Minister Zimande is trying to find is actually at the moment a short-term solution to stabilize the situation, but in order to allow time for us as government to actually look at the long-term solution where we are going to bring in not only the uh, institutions of higher learning, uh, students, parents, uh, parent bodies, but where we also begin to look as a country um, and, and, and as the nation bringing in the private sector, bringing in everyone else to see how best we address the issue. The issue of skills is an, a matter that is critical for our for growing our economy and uh, for bringing about stability in the country. So beyond just the short term, because the, uh, uh, the protests actually started as a result of the proposed increases to the fees. But it now turns out that the call is actually a call for no fee, uh, no fees at all. And um, to get to that point, that's where the long, longer, um, um, lasting solution is required. But in order to stabilise, I would want to believe that all we need is for everyone to apply. We all need to apply our minds in coming down the situation, such in order to allow space for engagement in order to find a, a, a long-lasting solution. It also seems as if this protest has moved beyond the issue of fees to more economic issues and underlying impacts that are hurting the economy with lack of job creation, high unemployment, these challenges. And, and you're faced with the task of raising tax revenue in a climate where economic growth is slowing, where corporate income tax is declining. Tell us about the tax measures that you're looking to implement to increase the state's coffers. And indeed, indeed um, you know, the point I was making earlier also was that, uh, you know, the other stakeholders here are parents of the learners. The parents of the learners are taxpayers also. And these are the people who actually would want to see their resources that we collect from the whole country being uh, deployed uh, efficiently in order to, to meet the needs of the South African people. So we did um, uh, propose uh, an increase in taxes uh, in the budget earlier this year. And it is uh, for that reason that uh, even though revenue has fallen, but it has been at a, at, a, at a better level than it would have been had we not raised the taxes. So there has been resilience in the tax in the tax collection. But going forward, we actually are not this time around because this is just a medium-term budget policy statement. We haven't proposed any tax changes. But uh, we are looking at uh, at the end of the day, we would need to be able to find revenue in order to fund. The, the needs and the, uh, and the challenges that the country requires. It's just before 11 and the students have made their presence felt. They are standing behind me and they are arriving thick and fast. The gates are about to fall as they are chanting and fears are now mounting as to whether or not police are going to act to subside the tension that's growing. Tensions mounted two days later as thousands of students marched on the union buildings in Pretoria. It is never about whether it's possible or not. What we are saying is that we are tired, tired of dialogue. We want Jacob Zuma to implement the policy that will ensure that the black child is given a, a sufficient chance to get education. <laughs>
After the ninth day of the Fees Must Fall movement, the president finally broke his silence by announcing that there will be a 0% increase in fees for next year. But this may not be enough to satisfy the many students who are calling for free tertiary education. Meeting agree that government needs to lead a process that goes wider than fees, looking at the higher education sector. On the matter at hand, we agree that there will be a zero increase of university fees in 2016.